You worked on other model airplanes for a while. Now that you are back to the 777, you want to look at the ICAS and secondary engine displays. You will use the display select panel and other flight deck controls and see how the indications change on the displays. First, you will look at the ICAS display. The engines are at idle. You will look at the ICAST display and identify the controls that change the display. Where do the engine parameters show on the display? This area shows N1 and EGT parameters. Now increase N1 to 50%. Look at the changes on the display. To see the name of each indication, select the information icon. Where is the gear position indication? The display shows the normal landing gear indication. There is one indication for the status of all landing gear. When any one landing gear is not in the normal configuration, this indication shows. Where is the flap position indication? Move the flap lever to up and monitor the display. The flap position indication goes away 10 seconds after the flap lever, flaps and slats are in the up position. Which of these indications shows when there is a flap position failure? OK. You see separate left and right indications for the flaps and slats. The alternate indication shows when you arm the alternate mode. Where do the pressurization indications show? The pressurization indications show when either of the outflow valves are set to manual on the bleed air pressurization panel. Note that both outflow valves are set to manual. Open the aft outflow valve so the airplane cannot pressurize and monitor the display area. Good. The pressurization indications show when either of the outflow valves are set to manual on the bleed air pressurization panel, when you show an air synoptic, or if there is a non-normal condition. It is unusual to see a non-normal pressurization indication on the ground. Other indications show on the ICAS display, including ICAS messages. Drag the correct label to each area.
Excellent! You can use the information icon to see the difference between a cluttered iCast display and a decluttered iCast display. You looked at the type of data that shows on the iCast display. You will look at different properties of the iCast messages next. iCast messages help you isolate faults. Look at these messages on this iCast display. Then you will identify properties of messages and use the cancel recall switch. First, identify each message type. Drag an iCast message over the correct message type box. Good. You identified each type of message. Next, you will identify the importance of each message. Select the highest priority message that shows in the ICAST message field. Now finish. Select each message in order of its importance. Memo messages have the lowest priority of all messages. They help you to remember the current state of conditions that you have identified the message types and their priorities. Now identify the other flight deck indications that go with these messages. Which type of message shows when you hear this indication? Correct. You hear the high-low chime when a medium communication message shows. Which type of message shows now? Correct. The master warning lights show with a warning oral. Select three message types that have no other indications. Correct. Since these message types do not require immediate crew attention, there are no other flight deck indications. Which type of message shows now? The master caution lights show with a caution oral. You identified several properties of the messages. 
Next, you will use the Cancel Recall switch to display different pages of messages. You need to make sure these messages from the logbook show on the ICAS message field. Where is the control you use to look at all the messages? Show the message for EFAS control panel right. Here is the first logbook entry. Now show the transponder left message. Good. Both messages show. When you use the Cancel Recall switch, certain message types stay on the display. Which message types are they? Correct. These messages stay on the display when you use the Cancel Recall switch. Now show the first page of messages again. Show the first page of messages. Good. You recalled the first page. You have seen all the crew alert messages now. You identified the message types, message priorities, and recognized other flight deck effects that occur with these messages. Also, you used the cancel recall switch to page through the caution and advisory messages. Next, you will look at the secondary engine display on the lower center DU. Show the secondary engine display in its normal location. Where did the secondary engine display show when the airplane got power? First, push the lower center switch to enable the lower center DU. These are the indications that show on this display. Drag the correct label to each box. Great! You saw what type of indications show on the secondary engine display. Next, you will see what happens if the upper center DU fails. Under normal conditions, the ICAS display and the secondary engine display show in these locations. If the upper center DU fails, which display shows on the lower center DU? Select and drag that display to the correct location. That's correct. The compacted engine display shows both primary and secondary indications. Which indications have a different format? The secondary engine parameters now show as digital readouts. 
N1 and EGT do not show differently on the compacted engine display. Other data can show on the compacted engine display. Select other data that can show now. Very good. Notice that the same pressurization indications showed on the ICAST display when you used the pressurization panel. What other engine format can show in the limited mode? Show it next. Great. In this lesson, you looked at how the displays change when a DU fails and you showed other data. You also operated many of the other controls that changed the displays. This completes the lesson.